Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wednesdays with Willa. You're listening to Lilydale Radio. I am your host, Willa White, and I have with me my guest today, Patricia Price. <laughs> Hi. Nice to be on Blog Talk Radio and <laughs> Lilydale Video. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> uh, Lilydale Radio, and we're so glad to have you. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about Patricia in a bit. Uh, but I want to tell you that with Wednesdays with Willa, I typically have a guest on every Wednesday at 10 a.m. And we have, talk about different topics and explore spiritual development, mediumship, faith, family. And it's a wonderful time to share together. And you can tune in on Facebook, on my Facebook page, Willa White Medium. And if you like uh, and follow my page, you'll be notified as, as to when I go live for the radio shows and, and for other events that I do, and to be updated on all things Willow White. You can also check out my website, willowwhite.com. Thanks for the love, everyone, on Facebook. We appreciate that. And our, uh, our intention with this show is, uh, is to have a spiritual conversation with each other and to share that with all of you. And you do have the opportunity of calling in and uh, you know, with your positive comments and questions about the topic of the day. And that call-in number is 818-739-8818. Again, 818-739-8818. And our topic today is Right Left Brain for Mediumship and Intuition. And we're going to get into that in just a, a little bit. I, I want to say uh, I'm always glad to have Patricia in my presence. I have enjoyed you for years, and Patricia has been one of my mentors that has assisted me in understanding my mediumship better. So, um, you know, she's um, been a bit of a mother to me at times, too. <laughs> so I appreciate that, Patricia. My, my joy. I always <laughs> love to be with Willa. <laughs> If I ever did have a daughter, I'd want her to be just like Willa. Oh, so. thank you. <laughs> yes. And Patricia Price is a registered medium here in Lilydale, as am I. And if you want to look at her website, it's www.patriciaprice.com. So you can find her there. And she has uh, wonderful services in the Trilogy Institute that, that she does as well. And you've been a medium for how many years now? Oh my goodness, way, way over 35, so uh, over 35 years. Yeah, yeah it's uh, been it's, a while. Uh, it's been a wonderful journey, and you know, you've inspired so many people by being their teacher and being by their mentor. And I, I know a lot of people have enjoyed teaching and, and being with you and, and learning from you. Thank you. I know yeah, everybody is my joy again not to teach. It's yeah. My, journey in life. <laughs> yes, I love it. And, uh, you know, in the past you were a te teacher in a school. Right, a public school, mathematics and computer literacy. Yeah. <laughs> so she has yeah. that side of, uh, of herself yeah. as well. <laughs> right, which was fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anything else you wanted to share with them? Anything that's coming up uh, in, in your schedule, in your world, or about yourself you wanted to share about right now? Um, well, you can look in the Lilydale catalog. I'm going to be teaching uh, on the program mediumship and okay. of course my Thursday night classes during the season always 830 in the Healing Temple on Thursday nights um, it's been a tradition for a lot a lot of years for us to have a home circle and develop mediumship together or just your spiritual path just come and join us it's yeah. lots of fun that's great yeah that's uh, the summer lineup I believe is available online through the Lilydale Assembly Dot org is the website address mm -hmm. and so you can find Patricia's summer workshops there and, and see the the daily and weekly events and it is a highlight of the week for that Thursday circle that Patricia offers so if you're looking for opportunities to learn with Patricia you'll have them and I hope you take advantage of, of what she has to to offer so uh, as I said our topic today is right left brain <laughs> and so why don't we share with them a little bit about that okay it's one of my favorite subjects because oh, yeah. <laughs> um, when I learned about right left brain science the biology of it 
it explained a lot of my life and it made me feel better about uh, how my brain has worked all my life. And many of you who are uh, mediums, psychics, uh, know that even as children we all are very right brain. It's natural for us to be right brain until we're about six, seven years old and then we start to really get into the balance of the left and right brain. And uh, so when kids like myself are very right brain, uh, maybe we don't learn so well things that are left brain, uh, even reading at, at the beginning. And so, um, the, and especially if you have a family that doesn't accept your mediumship or your intuitive flashes and your psychic abilities, then you may think yourself not so bright. Mm -hmm. Or you may be struggling and trying harder in school than you really need to. Mm -hmm. And people who understand children that are more right brain uh, find ways of teaching, and as I did, learning educational classes in college, um, learning the science of right brain, we can find ways to teach children that are easier and they learn to read better, they learn to, to do all kinds of things better in their early lives. But if we don't, then they struggle and we have, and I'm, the real shame today is that kids are on a lot of med medications mm -hmm. that I feel are, could be alleviated by looking at their behavior and then changing the way we teach them or the way that we have environments for them. And of course there's extreme cases, but anyway, my expertise now is in mediumship and psychic abilities and healing even, and which is very right brain. And I love to help my students to develop that right brain approach because that's where we receive the messages from spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not you and I talking together. If When we're in spirit, we don't have the vocal cords, so we think at each other yeah. and of course we can do that here on the earth plane but to pick up the thoughts of spirit to pick up the symbols through the thoughts to pick up the awareness through the thoughts even smells I mean uh, uh, fragrances we can get from spirit we can get a uh, taste from spirit we can hear clairaudiently we can see clairvoyantly mm -hmm. and so those things all come through the right brain mm -hmm. so the trick is to get the right brain to pick them up and then the left brain to say or write what we're receiving for our clients or for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So understanding the right brain, left brain, and then the corpus callosum that's between them, the corpus callosum between the two hemispheres of the brain brings the left and right brain together. So if we understand all that, then we're better mediums, better psychics, and we can help ourselves and others better. So to know that the left brain, I'll just use my cliff notes here. <laughs> the left brain is an analytic, uh, the analytical part of our brain. It deals with logic and language, reasoning, science and math, the written language, numbers, skills, right hand control, time, linear and sequential space. So that's what our culture really focuses on. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, try harder. Uh, when I taught mathematics, that was the arithmetic, that was the, the basic math, that was left brain. And of course, if you're left brain in this culture, you're highly valued and encouraged to do more right brain. But then there's the right, I'm sorry, the left brain. Then the right brain is art awareness, creativity, imagination, intuition, insight, uh, holistic thought, music awareness, 3D forms, left hand control, no time, no space, non-linear, non-sequential. So do we value that in this culture? Well, sometimes we do. Um, people who are extreme artists, who are uh, musicians, um, we value those people, but how many of them tell about their early lives that they had resistance from people around them to practice their art or uh, to um, think in a creative way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that we have a, a trend in education that is for right brain people, uh, but it's expensive. <laughs> and not a lot of kids that aren't in homes that have money get a chance to do their art or do their uh, music or do their uh, holistic thinking or their creativity. Now, the internet, I think, has made that more possible. Mm -hmm. We see uh, people on, um, you know, their own websites and uh, Facebook and Instagram and 
all kinds of sites that are uh, putting out their own music, their own art. Yes. And they're, they're making money and they're valued and mm -hmm. it's accessible. And we also see foreign countries <clears throat> sending their kids to our colleges because we encourage more creativity in our colleges than foreign colleges mm -hmm. or universities. <clears throat> so in the field of being a psychic, it's interesting because as I said, I taught mathematics for 10 years and computer literacy f for 10 years in schools and also did some substitute teaching in other grades, but high school and, uh, um, high school and junior high were my specialties. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I saw that teaching calculus, or the upper, like even geometry, mm -hmm. uh, that kids had to use their right brain. They had to let loose of the left brain and go into the right brain and look at the whole picture, look at the wholeness, and then to solve. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> computer programming is that way also. But we're seeing that the sciences are now going from left brain to right brain and encouraging people who are right brain. So when I teach mediumship, I'm really careful to make sure that people start out by going into the right brain and how important that is to access the right brain. Mm -hmm. And I just see um, Willa's book over here on yoga, things like yoga, things mm -hmm. like meditation, Things like taking a walk in nature all put us into extreme right brain. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's where we need to be to receive the higher guidance, I'm going to call it. Mm -hmm. And many people who are mystics, who are spiritual, who are religious, know how important that is. And you'll see in monasteries and convents and places of extreme mysticism or extreme spirituality, that there's an emphasis on nature, there's an em yes. emphasis on being quiet, fervent prayer, meditation, um, communion with nature. And those are all very right brain. And what do those people, I mean, we have writings from back in the, <clears throat> well, even in the Sanskrit, but the 17th century, uh, where St. Teresa of Avila went into extreme right brain uh, meditation and received what she called, you know, inspiration from God and levitated and, you know, came through with all kinds of mystic uh, information. But mediums today, the ones that are authentic and, and are bringing through incredible uh, proof of spirit are right brain. They're, they're going into that right brain easily and effortlessly. Mm -hmm. And that's what I start to teach immediately. And of course, you know, anybody who's ever studied mediumship from a master always has the emphasis on meditation. Yes. <laughs> meditate, 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 because it puts you into right brain. It puts you in that space where you can receive from spirit. And then being healthy, being, being able to make that jump from using the corpus callosum to make the jump from the right brain to the left brain, to have a healthy transfer between the two hemispheres, one must be balanced. So doing things like, um, well, I want to say marching, using your hands and your legs, opposite leg, opposite arm, mm -hmm. that kind of walking or any kind of physical exercise that way helps the corp corpus callosum to work better so that you're transferring the energy of the right brain to the left brain. Very uh, creative people in our Western world have uh, been ostracized at first and not gotten along well in society until they became recognized as geniuses. But um, again, they may have had a lot of trouble growing up not being able to bring their right brain creativity and inventions and imagination and uh, into the into the left brain where they could communicate and be social. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now that we understand that, we can help our kids and our young adults that are very creative to get over there and to express themselves creatively, not only in mediumship, but in art and yes. in music. In other ways in mm -hmm. their life. Yes. Uh, to be able to tap into that, because that, that left brain will help to put to words what your experience is. Absolutely. You know, there is a word, and the word is ineffable, and it, it means that uh, you 
don't have the right words to express what you're experiencing. Yes, yes. That does happen. It does. But when it comes to mediumship and understanding what you're receiving, you, in order to convey that to the client or to the person you're giving a spirit message to, you, you have to put it in some sort of framework. So I, that's why I've appreciated Patricia's ideas and methods about those things because it's, it's about saying, okay, I'm not going to engage my left brain at this time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to allow myself to flow more in that intuitive side and now I'll, put, I'll express it okay, left brain, you can do a little bit, but I'm going to babysit you so that you don't interfere and try to tell me I'm not seeing or not experiencing what I truly am. Yes, and that's another thing that I teach is um, a psychic dictionary. Yes. And that helps um, my students to have the left brain information that can be accessed by the right brain in order to communicate. Yes. So it's like, okay, I get a thought, and I'm... You know, I say, I'm reading the aura. Well, we're reading the energy of the person or reading the thoughts that come through an energy from spirit. So to have a psychic dictionary means that I have, if, I mean, color has been one of my you know, standbys. Mm -hmm. So the vi color is a vi vibration. It's a wavelength of light. So again, science comes in and we, if we know that that beautiful scarf that you're wearing, red, uh, has a certain wavelength, we can pick that up intuitively. Yes. And it has a feeling to it. Mm -hmm. It's bright, it's vibrant. This type of red is vibrant and alive and, and so on. Now there's a maroon, and I think there's some maroon in my jacket, that's more dark and it's... I, and again, we can put words to it instead of vital and alive. The maroon would be more subtle, even maybe morose or maybe even... Grieving. Sometimes um, I get uh, the color maroon around a person who's in deep grieving. Mm. Or the idea from spirit that my loved one's in grieving and it, you know, it makes me sad. I'd love to see them happy on the earth plane. So those messages can come through through color mm -hmm. and the interpretation of color, even though we don't think about that. But I've thought about that so I can teach it. Yes. <laughs> uh, broken it down and slowed it down so that I can say, okay, let's learn colors. And I just started a little home circle for my students um, last, well, it was this month, and we're going to have it once a month in my home. But we started right out with the chakra colors. We started right out with the energies of the old, ancient, actually, chakra system mm -hmm. that people have used for thousands of years. And the colors associated with that and the energies associated with that so that now spirit has a foundation to work with. Yes. My spirit guides know if they give me the color soft yellow in a person's energy, that I know that they're a teacher. And I, I want to, and someone in spirit wants to work with them in their teaching. And so, you know, it's very evident uh, that we can talk about that yeah. rather than nebulous and uh, It's like a shorthand that's developed. It is. A shorthand you, is a good As word. soon as you uh, have that symbol or that color or that uh, essence of something, you can say, ah, that's just, that's what this is about. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to continue our educations. I, yes. You know, you never, ever need to stop because there's always something new to learn. I'm going to a seminar, uh, actually Thursday, we're driving down to Alabama, and I'm going to study with a woman that I've admired for many, many years, and I know I'll learn a lot. Mm -hmm. I haven't learned it all, and I probably never will. It's just an ongoing wonder. It's I, part of the fun. <laughs> it is, and I learned to love to learn early on. I had an incredible kindergarten teacher that taught us to learn to love to learn. Mm -hmm. With, she did not give us homework. She did not teach us the ABCs or the one two threes. We learned to love to learn, and it was a delightful experience. Uh, then in you know first grade, we learned. Um, you got to knuckle down then. And then we knuckled down, but... <laughs> As six-year-olds, you know, uh, as five-year-olds, six-year-olds, we didn't, <clears throat> we learned to love school. And I think that's so important. It doesn't happen today, and uh, we could go off on another subject. But in the beginnings of teaching mediumship, the kindergarten of mediumship is excellent. You need to be in kindergarten. The yes. left, The left brain needs to be pushed out of, out of the way. Mm -hmm. And the right brain really 
Let's, let's develop the right brain. Let's develop our communication through the right brain. Let's say the right brain is good. When I teach, I always say, don't say the T word. And, uh, you know, we say the A word. Well, the T word is try, because trying happens in the left brain. Mm -hmm. We don't want to find ourselves thinking, analyzing, or intellectualizing. We want to allow, let go, let it flow. We have plenty of time to analyze it later. Later. And think about it later. Yes, yes. And just let it happen. And, and, and that's, that's the way when you're trying to remember a dream when you wake up. Mm -hmm. And if you try to think about what it means at that mm -hmm. moment, just write it down as mm -hmm. fast as you can. You're going to have plenty of time to think about it later. Because it will stall it out. It will make it poof, disappear. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you... you Go from the right brain into the left brain with yes. dreams. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. And so I teach dream work also, and I teach people to hardly move. Don't turn on a light. Make sure that you have the pen and the paper right there by your bed yes. so that you can just write. Um, that's not always ideal, but it works best because then you're staying in your right brain and you can really get the full information. And we're not saying the left brain isn't wonderful in its own right, but if you're wanting to cultivate mediumship and intuition, it's wonderful if you can bring a, a more awareness to the right brain and that's its functions and how it's working with you. Right. And the, the left and right <clears throat> brain do work in concert with one another. They do, they have in to. In many ways, but you, you want it to get to that point in your mediumship that you can have that on automatic pilot. Absolutely. So it takes a lot of work. It does. I mean, meditate when, when teachers say that meditation, 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 they, they're serious. It, I mean, it's true. It gets you into your right brain and it relaxes you. It keeps you in your right brain. It, Like you said, it becomes automatic. And you get the trying, the intellectualizing, the figuring it out out of the way. And you get the allowing spirit to impress you to the ideas of your spirit guides, your helpers, your angels, your loved ones. It's so easy once you do that. But our culture has so ingrained us with this idea to try harder and to think about, think about think, it, think, reason, think. you know, uh, use your logic here. <laughs> so I remember you telling a story about uh, teaching math and how some people, you know, they have to work through the, pro the, pro the problem and show the proof of how they got to that Point, but some people intuitively know the answer yeah. to math, and they're not cheating. Yeah. They just happen to know the answer. It's, it's true. rare, but it, there are people that but it's do true, that. Right. They, some of my exceptional students were like that. Um, but I did, I did acknowledge them for that. But I also insisted that they show their work. Um, to, could to, could do the other, could yes. go back and do the other, because um, once we got into the higher mathematics, especially, again, calculus, trigonometry, um, ge uh, geometry, that the steps were important. Yes. Um, and then it, it, what happens is it's like computer programming. The steps are important, and then it's the aha. Mm -hmm. Then it's, uh, you know, it's like any uh, creativity. You have to have the basics first, and then you can go off on the, on the creativity. It's like learning the notes on the piano first, and the scales, and then you can create music. Mm -hmm. Which, again, isn't always true. I know your dad, <laughs> yeah. your dad does music by He's his ear. Yeah, by his, he yeah. listens to something, and then he, he plays it on the guitar. And, and, so, and perfects it. And perfects it. But it isn't that he didn't have the basics, because he did. But they're long gone. They're yes. long gone. And it's the same with mathematics. You have to have know how to add and subtract and multiply and divide. But some people learn that so quickly and then they can just jump off yes. and do Spring higher board. higher yeah. mathematics. And it's the same with algebra. Algebra has has rules. You have to know the rules and then you can jump off and do all kinds of wonderful algebra. And actually the greatest downfall in calculus is algebra. <laughs> so you better know your algebra. And so it's the same with psychic work and mediumship. You better have your basics. You better have meditated that morning. You better have taken your walk in nature. Um, you know, the things that really work for you that are right brain. Yeah, that prep you for mm -hmm. that experience. And it keeps you more balanced. I, I've seen mediums that are completely off 
in Woo Woo Land. Land. I'm in La La Land, Woo Woo Land. They've gone too far right brain. Sometimes. Right. And it, <laughs> it just doesn't work. Their life doesn't work. Right. And that's too bad because it can be such a delight and such a joy to be balanced in your left brain activities in life and then to use your right brain. Well, that's why I tell people, don't quit your day job just because <laughs> oh. you're, you know, you want to explore your mediumship yeah. and some people want to dive right in. While you're learning and while you're you're under starting to understand how you receive information and, and how that right brain, left brain functioning can work in concert with one another, it's important to not go to woo woo. So, you know, like, I remember I was doing a, a lot of bookkeeping, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, numbers work, and that actually helped to ground me yes. so that I wasn't, you know, Ooh, I'm a yeah. spirit. You know, and having a having a family, having children, having those mm -hmm. kind of responsibilities, it's not a bad thing. It helps to bring you back into that grounded space. It does. And not only that, the life experience that you have helps you to understand other people's uh, life experience. And again, to receive messages from spirit, you have to have some life experience for them to communicate with you. Yes. And I know that with mediums, I've heard it over and over again. When you have a life experience that's traumatic, then like attracts like, as natural law says. You know, I had an uh, uh, experience with a loved one who was alcoholic. And sure enough, uh, people who were my clients started to tell me about their loved ones who were alcoholics or drug addicts. So I had the experience because right away, I didn't just, you know, take it in stride. I got a lot of counseling and information about it. And not that I'm an expert, but I, if someone needed an expert, I knew who to send them to. Right. If they were going through uh, emotional trauma, I knew that emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, suicide is another thing. One of my members of my family committed suicide. So I, I get so many calls and so many clients who have people who are suicidal or yeah. who have committed suicide or themselves are depressed and uh, need help with suicide. So as a medium, you need to have that right that left brain experience, that common life experience, be able, like Willis said, to to uh, live a normal life, to be grounded, to be able to, I've always said, to balance your checkbook, mm -hmm. so to speak. You know, <laughs> you, you just can't go off. You can't just go long. all right brain. No, left no. brain stuff is good. It's, We're not saying it's no, not. <laughs> balance is the best. Balance, balance is, is best. the best. And there's, again, there's a, a body of knowledge called Brain Gym, there's another name for it uh, in the United States and throughout Europe that teaches people to balance the right and left brain. Mm -hmm. And again, I told you about some of the exercises. And in my training for mediumships, I, I give my students some of those exercises to make sure that they are balanced left, right brain, that they get more balanced left, right brain. But that teaching is marvelous. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very, not very well understood, but it's being taught more. And I even see centers in California that are opening to help people to balance their right left oh, brain. Wow. Because students that are usually learning deficient have, don't have that balance between right and left brain. Mm -hmm. So they need that. So we're seeing it you know, in many, many areas where we're recognizing that we need a balance between the right and left. Well, I'm always fascinated by what neurophysicists have to say and... and there's one in particular that is kind of like my favorite one that uh, whenever I read something about him or see a documentary with him, his name is uh, Vilyanar Ramachandran, so I'm probably butchering the name, but he's at the University of uh, California and he's done a lot of study of the brain and how it works and they, they talk about mirror neurons and they talk about Gandhi neurons that are in the brain and mm -hmm. mirror neurons help us to understand what somebody else is feeling. Yes. And we start to mirror that in our own bodies. We start to feel what that other per is. So it's it's the it's where empathy is in the brain. Mm -hmm. And then also the the Gandhi neurons, right? And that's uh, empathizing to such a de degree uh, that you feel compassion yes. because of this. So it's, it's really interesting how the brain functions and they're they're on the left and the right brain sides, mm -hmm. uh, and how and how they feel, how they mirror that and and how they uh, help people 
to develop their intuition and, and develop their empathy. And I don't think that's what the scientists were, were trying to prove necessarily, right. but it's, it's what they happened upon. Yeah, and that's an interesting subject because a lot of people that are developing their mediumship, and I ran across that, I have a few beginners in my class this winter, and they are very emotional. They, uh, when we sit mm -hmm. and we start to meditate, they start to cry. They start to just tear. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, you know, I've always wondered what that is because that happened with me when I first started to develop. But I feel it's a release in the right brain, the emotion. Mm -hmm. And like you say, it's probably on both sides of the brain. But that compassion and that feeling, the emotions, are very right brain. Yes. And so when you're getting into using your right brain more, you may feel more compassion, you may feel more emotions, and that's scary in this culture. We don't like to talk about feelings very much, and so that can be very scary. So it's not just the intuition and the psychic uh, and the mediumship, it's the emotions that are coming up too. Yes. So it's really important, and I do teach um, uh, an emotional technique that's thousands of years old called transformational breath work, yes. that again helps people to resolve the emotional trauma or even the emotional stuckness that they may be in. So that goes right along with the mediumship. Yes. That I encourage my, encourage my students to You need to, to be cultivating your own inner self. Right. So that, you know, you're cleaning and clearing as much as you yes. possibly can. Yes. To do more pure channel for spirit to work with. Right. And right. so that everything that hits you, it doesn't just keep hitting buttons That's right. and pressing those. That's why the second course that I teach in the mediumship certification has to do with self-development. It has to do with uh, the enfoldment of the true self, the higher self, as Hinduism talks about the self with a capital S. Yes. The I am that I am in many cultures, uh, talking about um, our higher self and developing that. Uh, self-actualizing in psychology they call it mm -hmm. but it's very important that we are you know balanced human beings and using the right and left brain again uh, do you remember uh, there was a National Geographic oh, I don't know, probably 15 years ago now but they had a picture of God and what it was is is uh, they had done scans on on the brain when people were experiencing <laughs> God <laughs> and so what they would do is they uh, they got some uh, transcendental meditators uh, they, they hooked up some you know Catholic nuns people who are used to meditating right mm -hmm. and uh, they it, the, the brain would light up in a particular way when that person had entered into that transcendental space inside, sure. it, inside of their experience of meditation and prayer. Sure. And so that it would light up in, in both, right, and mm -hmm. left brain in, in that experience. But it is, but, but National Geographic actually said this is, this is a picture of God. That's great. <laughs> So I thought yeah. I'd bring that up too, yeah. Is, is, yeah. Is, is how the brain experiences the divine. And mm -hmm. I feel as mediums, our brains probably are lighting up in, in you know, big time when we're, we're allowing this oh, process to go on absolutely. because we're connecting with, with those things in spirit. And I know for myself, I'm very strongly clairsentient, so I feel. So I probably mm -hmm. have all these mirror neurons going on yes. and uh, feeling what the person in spirit was was like when they were here on the mm -hmm. earth plane, what they feel for the client now. And, and so I, I almost wish some mediums would hook up to get those scans. Yeah, I had that done <laughs> Just, actually. Oh, you have? Gosh, it was a long time ago, maybe 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. Some uh, scientists came to my Thursday night class and um, put all kinds of, you know, black Gizmos. on my on my head and yeah. um, my heart and so on. But uh, she was studying mm. what happens when we go into trance or we go into um, a space where we're giving messages. Yeah. So she was studying that. So there must be studies out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's probably yeah. out there and, and they're doing a lot with helping to understand intuition. And what I'll, what I'll say to a lot of people is that imagination and intuition live in the same house. Absolutely. And right <laughs> and next door to each it, other. So um, intuition uses imagination to convey information. Mm -hmm. And then your left brain helps you to put language that's right. to that experience. That's right. Yeah. So that's how I would say this all, in a nutshell, gets utilized. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I want to remind people who might just be coming on, on board for our show 
Um, I'm Willa White, and this is my show Wednesdays with Willa. I have my, as my guest today Patricia Price. Hi. So always so glad to have you on the show. And if anyone wants to call in, we don't have too much uh, left to the show, but you can call in, and the call in number is 818-739-8818. Again, 818-739-8818. 8818. If you had any uh, questions about this topic, something you wanted to comment about this topic, we'd love to hear from you and, and get your viewpoint. Or if you wanted to ask Patricia a question about anything with right left brain, uh, we can have some fun. But I know people are on Facebook and they've been making wonderful comments and we appreciate it very much. <laughs> so as far as, as doing right left brain, uh, one, of, one of the things, uh, you know, having learned from you about that and then my own learnings uh, with right left brain function and, and awareness have, and you have your techniques that that you share with people uh, have you noticed that the mind focus and concentration techniques help oh gosh that's with my that? that's my biggest um, <laughs> uh, emphasis on developing mediumship clarity yes I was a registered medium and still not getting the clarity that I wanted. Mm. And so I was not, I, I couldn't, sometimes I couldn't tell if the person was coming through was alive or deceased. I, uh, the time period was not coming together, you know, the way I wanted it to. So there were things, I was a good medium, but I wanted to be better. Yeah. And I heard the name of a teacher uh, in, a, in a class here in Lloydale, the man was lecturing, and I heard the name of a teacher, and just bells went off in my mind, in my head. And I thought, I want to study with her. That she has something for me about this clarity thing that I've been praying about. That I want more clarity. So I asked the man after for her number and got her number and where she was teaching. She was teaching in Baltimore. And I went to her class, and she taught, um, she taught a method of concentration that helped me to get what I wanted. Yes. And I came home and I started thinking, oh, my first teacher did that, but I didn't pay attention. Mm. So uh, actually, he was my second teacher. I, uh, I studied with Clyde and Hannah Yoder here in Lilydale. Now that's been 40, 48 <laughs> years ago. And I sat in their classes. And he would say to us, okay, we're going to hold the... Uh, this image of a rose, and uh, then we're going to go into receiving messages. Well, I never realized that that was really a concentration technique. Mm -hmm. And I had learned another concentration technique from this woman that I went to the seminar on, but reminded me that it's the same thing. There are, I, in my courses, I teach five different methods of concentration mm -hmm. going into meditation, but the concentration I tell my students, you must do this at least three minutes every day. And you will see... A, Miracle happened just the first week. It's not mm -hmm. just in your mediumship, but in your everyday life, being able to concentrate. And that's a whole other program yes. because we <laughs> are getting away from concentrating in our everyday life with all the technology we have. Yeah. We're constantly being switched to one thing to another, and our concentration is... Actually, scientifically, they've proven that over the last 20 years, our concentration as adults has gone down, down, down. Yeah. And that is not good for mediumship. So I, I'm just putting this out to, <laughs> to, to Facebook land. Anyone who wants Patricia Price to come back on my show and talk about mind focus and concentration <laughs> techniques, you just type a one in and press enter in the comments and and uh, maybe we can get her back to talk about that too. <laughs> that would be great. So start doing your ones in comments uh, with all of that. It would be great to have have her back to talk about those things because it, it's very valuable. It's very valuable. And it, and it focuses uh, the, the left brain and the right brain together. Together. So mm -hmm. that they, you can have better clarity in what you're receiving. And, and in life. Uh, we, we need it for both. Yes, so we do. I'm seeing ones. Life. Oh, there we go. Let's <laughs> <laughs> oh, see how many ones we can get about this. <laughs> ones are convincing. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, who doesn't want to have a better life? Who doesn't want to be a better medium? You know, so when you find things that work, you you want to. I want to share it. I want yes. other people to have it, and I use it in my own life. So that's what I've developed over all these years. Uh, more techniques to help students, and I'm uh, my assistant and I are just putting a book together, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got two more things to add to that. You know, and it's like <laughs> oh. we've got to rewrite this. And so I'm. 
I'm not only seeing that the concentration, uh, there's more to add, but there's more to add to other techniques for other things that can help us develop our mediumship. It's no wonder that mediums get better and better. Oh, yeah. Because we're learning more about <laughs> mediumship. The more you do it, the, the more you do it. That's right. And practice, <laughs> again, practice is I, so I know important. we don't have much time left. I see, uh, I want to take this caller really sure. quickly. Um, so, caller ending in 2037. Again, caller ending in 2037. Hello and welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, Hi um, this is Nana. I'm from Raleigh. Oh, wonderful. And, and what, did, yeah. did you have a question about right left brain for us today? Um, That's our yeah, talk. Um, just, um, I'm curious about, uh, yeah, it, it's all very 90 seconds. So have you, as far as right left brain, you're asking what you work from personally? Yeah, or what, what's more dominant? Your own brain, or or someone else's brain? <laughs> well, I, I, was, <laughs> I was thinking of mine, but I was also thinking of my husband. Ah. <laughs> Sixty seconds. Well, we only have well, a few seconds here, so yes. So it, I think the best thing for you to do is get. Um, information on what is right be brain behavior and what is left brain behavior and then to sort of say what do I use most. Artists in particular, uh, Willa's mother is an artist and a medium. She is yes. very, 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 very right brain. Very. And uh, my uh, engineer boyfriend uh, in California, he's very, 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 very left brain. He's just very linear, very scientific. Um, he doesn't, he will say, maybe I have a hunch, but he'd never admit he had an intuitive flash. Yes. <laughs> so you know, so you may want to just look at something, Google it. and Yes, uh, and Google it, and you'll be able to, to narrow that down for yourself and then work through it. So thank you for calling in today, Dana. <laughs> And I'm, I'm glad we were able to talk so much. Uh, time goes by. I say this every time for, for our show. And I especially appreciate Patricia being on the show today. Thank you so much for You're being You're welcome. Here Such a pleasure to be here. Yes. Always with you, Willa. So Always. I hope everybody enjoys it. Next week I have as my guest, uh, Lisa Williams will be on the show. And we're going to talk about mediumship around the world. <laughs> and so we'll talk about different mediumship ship t uh techniques and ways that uh, the world uh, develops that. So tune in next week, same time, same channel. And I'm so glad that you all were able to join us today and enjoy Wednesdays with Willa. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we appreciate you.